Uh, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series. This was a request that I got from a few people on my Instagram where they were saying there's not an awful lot of videos out there about this specific type of plant. So we're going to be talking about a platycerum today. And again, apologies if I am butchering that name. But essentially, it's all the plants that might commonly be called staghorn ferns. And I'm not, I don't have every different version of what might be classed as a staghorn fern. I have only got one. I have got mine and it is mounted and I will show you now. This is my staghorn fern and this is a platycerum superbum or superbum. I like the name for this one. It's a superbum. <laughs> it's superbum and you can see it is on my usual looking very janky uh, cork board with some support sticks at the back, an awful lot of <laughs> fishing wire and a hook. <laughs> but let me put this down really quickly. I'll bring it up again throughout the video. We can kind of talk through it, but let's go through some ground rules. So if you're one of the people that has come back time and time again, thanks, welcome back. You know where you can find the section of the video that you might want to jump to. If you are new and joining for the first time, welcome to the slight insanity that is this plant review series. And I have obviously linked it at some point throughout the video where you can see the whole playlist and I've got all of it listed there. So if you want to binge, you can go there and have a look basically. But what I always say for the people that are just joining is there is no way of me making this review series unbiased. It is my review of my plant in my conditions. My conditions specifically for this plant is growing in a conservatory within the UK and whatever that might mean in terms of heat, humidity, cold in the winter. Oh, cold in the winter. Bubble wrap everywhere at the moment. Wow. Uh, although I have I've seen it written in an article recently where it's bubble glazing because a lot of people are using bubble wrap to line their windows to make the houses a bit warmer in the winter here in the UK, which is a bit of a tragic thing to be saying as a sentence because this is something that people use in their greenhouses and it's probably not the best thing for everybody's health to be living in conditions like that. But it does help. It does help bring up the temperature a bit. Anyway, sorry, massive tangent there. But yes, what I always do with these videos is if you've got this plant as well, and you want to add your own review, I do encourage every single one of you to leave it in the comments down below. Try to make it constructive because I essentially want these videos and the comments to be a bit of a repository of information for people. So how long have you had your plant for? Where is it roughly growing? What conditions are you giving it? What have you found with this plant? Is it still with you? Is it struggling? Is it doing really well? Say all of these things because myself and everybody else who would watch these videos would probably want to know because then they can kind of estimate if they're thinking about getting this specific plant in their house or in their conditions, can they do this and maybe things that they might want to watch out for. Everybody's obviously unique and their own conditions are going to be very unique, but it gives a bit of an insight rather than just kind of going, oh look, I got a plan. But yeah, without further ado, let's go into the first topic. So background with this plant specifically, and it's a really awkward one to try and film, and I will see if I can add a few clips on this, but it is very, very awkward in terms of, it also doesn't help the fact that you might be able to see, if I bring it in there, you might be able to see right there, there's a bend, the, <laughs> the cork board has snapped, and the janky support sticks, you can see how much they are bending, are doing the mostest at the moment. Do I need to maybe move this onto a new cork board? Probably. Will it be happening today? Probably not. Will it happen at some point in the next few weeks? Probably. But essentially this plant is a plant that I have had, I would say, I think, and the title of the video will have it because I'll find it from my plant care app. I think three or four years now. So I've had it for a while. I did get it in, a pot, it was in a pot, and it was in a pot of coco coir 
and I'll talk a bit more about accessories and cares in terms of what I did for that one. But, and I will put a picture here as well of what it looked like when I first got it from my plant care app. It has grown a bit. It keeps getting knocked back. It keeps coming back. I got this from a local garden center in the area where I live. It was definitely smaller than what it is now. And I think these are called the shield fronds and these are the fertile fronds, I think. Um, but I'm not a huge knowledge base when it comes to ferns because like most people, I managed to kill most ferns. This is a different story altogether, I will say. So yeah, I got it from the garden center. I'll talk a bit more about availability when we talk to that section as well. And it was on their reduced to clear. So I don't think it was particularly that expensive. It didn't look great when I first got it and I knew that there was gonna be some rehab involved. I didn't know an awful lot about it. I knew that platycerums generally are the stack home firms. I liked the idea of it. I didn't know if I was gonna pot it up at that point. It was just a bit of an impulse purchase, if I'm being honest. But it has surprised me time and time again as a plant and it has been easier to care for than I originally had thought. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in terms of the background on this plant. Let's move into the next topic. So talking about speed of growth with this one, mm, it is not the fastest plant, at least in my experience, in terms of growth. And you can see the new growth comes in in that little swirl at the moment. And then what will happen is that will create a new leaf frond and the kind of fertile bits at the top, which is what the kind of stag element of the staghorn fern name probably comes from. You can kind of see it looks a bit like the antlers potentially. And with this one, I would say there's a new leaf because it's essentially almost, I'm pretty sure it's almost kind of one singular leaf. I'll bring it in so you can see a bit more. There's an old leaf there and this is the newer leaf there. I don't want to move it too much because the leaves are actually kind of relatively turgid. You can see that unfortunately I touched it there and some of the pubescence that I had on there has actually disappeared, which is a bit of a shame, but there is a slight fuzziness and you can see there, this isn't dust, that is part of the plant itself. So in terms of speed of growth, I would say it's, a, it's an interesting one because it will maybe bring out a new leaf once every two or three months. And I would say that's consistent year round. It might get a tiny bit faster, in the summer, and again, as I said, benchmarking in this space, a golden pothos, for instance, in the summer months, per month, it will bring out two or three leaves. This takes a lot longer, at least it has done in my experience. If I gave it a bigger plank or maybe more of a growing media in the back, would it probably do a bit better and maybe go a bit faster? Possibly. Do I want it to? I'm not entirely sure, basically. I'm kind of okay with what it's doing because it sits at the top of my conservatory against, uh, above the door basically that comes in. And it does its own thing basically. So not the fastest growing plant in my experience at least. I would be very curious to see if you've got this plant and yours grows super fast. Do let me know down below. Very, very cool. And I don't think I'll be able to find an image. If I can find an image that I can share on a video, I will do, but if I don't, do a quick Google search on Platycerum superbum and have a look at some of the mature specimens. They are huge, absolutely ginormous, usually against the tree trunk, just wow. So I don't think this is ever gonna to get to that level, but I enjoy it nonetheless. So moving into ease of propagation, I think this might be one of the few plants that I will honestly say I have never propagated it. So I really don't know. I cannot offer an opinion on propagating this specific plant. To be fair, I don't think I've ever propagated other than kind of maybe dividing other types of ferns. I don't think I've ever propagated a fern in any other way other than just division, basically. So 
I wouldn't even know where to start with this because this is just one plant, basically. So I do think that what happens is the fronds at the top will get, I think I might be wrong with this one, will get kind of almost these orangey, browny, dusty dots. And that is pollen, or it is something that you use instead of seeds. And I can never remember the name right now, and I'll see if I can find it and put it at the top there. I have never done that to propagate. There is one or two people that I follow, and I've been following their very dear friends that I've been following for a long time on Instagram. And if you're watching this video, hi, um, that have kind of propagated ferns. Uh, and I think they've done it quite well. Whether or not they've propagated this specific fern, I don't know. But that's a whole different ballpark that I have never tried. But have you ever propagated this specific fern? How did you find it? Let everybody, including myself, I'd be really curious to know how it went down below. And tell us how you found everything in terms of growing this plant, how did it do, all of these things. And then coming into availability. So availability with this one was an interesting one because as I mentioned, I got this from Garden Center. I don't think they are particularly difficult to find. I think you can come across it. This needs a bit of, not necessarily research, but a bit of searching online and you should be able to find at least a version of this plant, at least here in the UK and in Europe. I do, this is again another type of plant that I see come out in flushes and I would imagine that's coming out of the, like the, the Netherlands and the growers there. So you won't necessarily find it year round, but you will find it. I think the reason why I didn't buy this when it first came up in the garden center is because it was mid double digits and that was weird for that garden center. It wasn't particularly big. And I didn't know about it too much and I didn't know what to do. And I know this this out of a lot of the platycerums, the superbum one, is possibly a bit trickier to find sometimes, but it does come up. I have seen it come up a few times. I don't think the price has fluctuated too much. So mid double digits towards low double digits, I would say. So in the UK, you're kind of looking anywhere between kind of 40 or 50 Great British pounds to may, I don't think I've ever seen it for less than 14, 15 Great British pounds. And I think this one might've been around that when I got it as a struggling kind of rehab plant, maybe a tiny bit lower. And it did need some time to rehab. And when I was rehabbing this plant, I kept it in its media that it already had been there for almost about a year, I think, before I decided to put it up onto a mount. And it was growing really weirdly and it was wrapping around the pot and it looked a bit janky for a long period of time. And this plant generally, this isn't necessarily, at least in my opinion, isn't necessarily one for the people that like really pristine plants, but we'll come into that a bit in accessories and care. But you can find it at least around here. You might just need to do a bit of searching. This isn't one that you're going to find in a box store, I don't think. This is probably going to be one that you're going to find in a plant store or in a garden center. And actually, depending on the plant stores, because I would imagine you they can find this from their growers that they maybe deal with in the Netherlands, at least for here in the UK and in Europe. If you go and talk to a plant store and say that you're looking for this type of plant, Potentially they might find it in their next order and they can order it specially in for you. Is that going to make it a bit more expensive? Possibly. But it might be worth a trial because this is kind of a cool plant actually. But yeah, in terms of availability, you can kind of find it. You just might need to do a bit of research and it's not stupidly expensive, I don't think. So coming into pests with this one, and this is an interesting one in terms of pests. I'm trying to think if I've ever had any pests on this. I don't think I have. I don't think I've had spider mites. I don't think I've had white fly. I don't think I've had mealybugs on this. In terms of pests, ironically enough, in here, the few things that I have seen, I've seen an actual spider come out from the back of where the growing media is. 
I have maybe seen some isopods or wood wood lice, wood louse. I don't know. Come out of the back as well. Maybe the the occasional slug. But other than that, relatively pests free for me, I would say, in here basically. And this is the thing I will always say about this one as well, is I know that a lot of people might be growing this plant in regular household humidity. This is still growing in my conservatory. But pest-wise, not an awful lot with this one, to be fair. So that's a, that's a plus, I think. But let's move into the next topic. So accessories on care for this, there's probably going to be a lot more that I'm going to say here. So if I bring this up and you can see in there, you might be able to see some of the growing media right underneath all of this browning leaves. It's right in there. It is, and I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see the state of this. Uh, you can see all of the fishing line. You can see the back of some of these leaves, which look a bit brown and crispy. And let me bring that in a bit there so you could see through there. There you go. And it is with damp sphagnum moss. I am not going to talk about how you mount a uh, staghorn fern because there's an awful lot of videos on YouTube that have probably will probably do a better job at explaining it to me. And also, do you really want yours to look as janky as mine? <laughs> probably not. They will much prettier videos to describe that. Mine I'm okay with what it is essentially. And you can see all I did at the top there, and this was the, the benefit that I got with using a cork board, is I just, this is one of those screw hooks that I just screwed in. Doesn't look great, but to be fair, by this point, the plant is pretty much hiding most of what it's growing on. So I'm all right with that. Now, before anybody asks about all of these crispy leaves, there is a reason why I'm leaving them on there. And this is something that I found out during my research again, badly after I bought the plant, but again, it's the reality for a lot of us is we don't necessarily always have the luxury of having done the research before we get the plants. What I saw from a lot of people is that they leave the browning at the top there because it keeps some of that humidity around that growing media in the back. And I have found that this does help a lot. It might just be because I'm expecting it to help. It might, I've never done an experiment to tell you 100%, but that's why I leave the browning at the top because it does keep some of that moisture within the growing media. The other thing I will say about this, and this is probably why this is one of the few ferns that have survived in my care, this is a feral plant in my collection. And by that, I mean, it literally gets taken down I think a lot of people water these quite frequently. This gets taken down once every seven or 10 days. It is entirely bone dry. So is the fern, so, so is the sphagnum moss, and so is the media that's behind it. And I will kind of put water through the top there and let it run through. I will water it down at the bottom here. That's why it's looking, and you can see some of the some of the cork board has actually snapped off because it was starting to rot. That's why I said this probably does need to be remounted. Am I going to do it now? Probably not. I might because I don't want to stress this too much out at the moment. This might happen in the summer months and probably the way that I would do it is instead of trying to remove the very fine kind of fern roots that have probably gone into this bark is I would essentially just add another piece of bark behind it to then extend it and give it a bit more stability so it can kind of, so essentially it will just be doubling up on the bark behind just because then it's growing within the media that it's growing. And I would imagine in nature, if this is growing up against a bark and some of that bark starts to rot where the fern is kind of getting its roots in, it probably doesn't cause any real issues to the fern. It might do for the tree, but this is not a tree attached to it, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, you'll get things like what I was talking about before. So you could potentially take that pubescence off, that fuzziness will come off. And if you know anything about this type of kind of fuzz that you get on foliage, and sometimes you get it within those glaucous, um, the kind of blue powderiness that you might get on some of the echeveria or kind of some of the more succulent type plants, it is there to protect that leaf to a certain point. So I try to not remove it as much as possible. That unfortunately happened probably when I was 
bringing it down to water it at some point. But it's not been particularly difficult in its care. So as I said, I let it dry out. It is sitting against the wall. It is getting beat down daily because this is at the highest point of my conservatory. There is nothing hiding it from all day sun during the summer. Yes, there is usually shade cloths and things like that. If I didn't have some shade cloth, you might get some burning. And I think some of that initial burning that happened on this leaf, and this should give you an idea of how slowly this grows, happened during the summer months, which is almost six months ago now, um, because it's before I put the shade cloth on. And that's the exactly previous leaf. So there is that to remember. And this does get wider and you kind of need to let it do its own thing. It will wrap around the leaf. And I think that's probably because it's keeping in some of that moisture and it's keeping it there. And you just need to make sure you don't really damage this new growing part because that will be your new leaf when it comes out. There was a point where I thought it might be dying out because that, that had dried out, but it just kept going. So it it's not a plant that I find is particularly fussy. Yes, it is in here, so I don't know what this specific Platycerum would be like in regular household humidity. If you do have the Superbum or the Superbum, not Superbum, <laughs> in your house, and um, you want to say what the what the conditions is that you've got on there and it's growing happily, please do drop it down below. Um, but yeah, this is interestingly enough, for a really cool plant to grow. I'm trying to think of what else. I fertilize this maybe two or three times a year. Uh, and it goes through the same area that I was talking about there. It doesn't need an awful lot of fertilizer. I'm trying to think if that's actually true. It might even just get the, the regular very light fertilization that I do for most of my plants every time it gets watered. I think that's actually the case. When I first started off, I'd seen a lot about it not wanting a lot of fertilizer, and I didn't. But then I kind of feral plant, I'm just like, you can get what everybody else is getting. And it hasn't really caused it any real issue. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the care and accessories for this. Obviously, planks, you can put it on. It was in its pot, it was fine. But yeah, it's a relatively straightforward plant. Let's move on to the next topic. So I've put it down so we can look at some final thoughts on this plant. And overall, let's go with the scoring that I usually do. Knowing what I know now, if I didn't have this plant and I came across it, would I purchase it? Yes, I probably would. It's not a plant that takes an awful lot of my time to care for. It's a plant that's unusual enough. It's a plant that you can kind of put against a wall. Yeah, I would probably get this plant again. Mm, I will put an addendum to that and say if I could get a slightly more mature version of this plant, a slightly larger version of this plant based on how slow I've seen it grow in my care at least, it might not be as I keep saying this, this has been my experiences with this plant, I would go for a slightly larger one just so you can get that instant kind of wire factor a bit faster because it, it is a bit of a slow grower at least in my experience. Now in terms of a score from zero, one being the the kind of worst, 10 being the best. This is a tricky one because it's a fern and for most people, and this is the other thing that I would say, this is one of the few ferns that has still survived in my care years later. That should tell you something. So I think probably with this one, I would probably give it seven or an eight. I didn't think I was going to go that high, but yeah, seven or an eight. As long as you kind of do some of that original granite groundwork, especially if you're going to mount it and have it somewhere and just be aware that depending if you maybe get it in a very dry household condition, it might dry out faster than mine does. But again, this one I found can take that extra bit of dryness. Sometimes it is literally by the time I dry it, it is very, very light. So it is bone dry. Um, and I think, by the way, the reason why I did that is because I think having done the research that I did, they prefer to go dry between waterings, and this is why it's a bit odd for a fern. And I would say after this many years, it hasn't killed the plant. Is that maybe the reason why it's a bit slower if everybody wants a bit faster? Possibly, but it's fine. So for these reasons, 
I would give it a high score. I would say you need to get it somewhere where it gets a decent level of light. I don't think this is one that might do as well. Again, I might be wrong. This is just based on what I've experienced with this. I don't think this does particularly well with very, very low light situations. I think this does need some light because every time I've seen this growing in the wild, it's growing on kind of regular trees, relatively close to the canopy. So it's getting kind of shaded from all the leaves outdoors. And that's generally the case. If it's getting shaded outdoors, then indoors is probably going to be bright in direct light. And I think for a lot of people, when they're thinking ferns, they're thinking medium to medium low light. I think this one needs to be bumped up. And as long as you're aware of that, you should be fine. But yeah, overall, really, really cool plant. I'd be curious to see your opinions on this plant. So do let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.